My name is Fred Hoffheinz. During the uh, entire Vietnam War period, I was a Roman Catholic chaplain at Wabash College. So I saw a lot of what was going on in camp, at least that campus, and I don't think it's that dissimilar from other campuses. One of the most important events, or most frightening events, I guess, happened in 1970. As much many people will know, uh, beginning in 1965, I think, and then throughout the war, in Vietnam itself, Buddhist monks protested the war or the ruling regime or various things by going into the center of the city, sitting down kind of cross-legged in the middle of the street, uh, dousing themselves with some flammable liquid, and then setting themselves on fire. And that image was captured and put all around the world. One of the most iconic events for the states was Kent State University in May 4th, I think, 1970, when the Ohio National Guard went on the Kent State campus during a major protest, and I think the kids in the National Guard uh, panicked and they began shooting and killed, I think, four people and wounded maybe 20. That raised a real uproar among colleges everywhere. And across the country, there was a four-day, five-day moratorium on classes where people demonstrated, people had speakers come in, and a variety of activities. Wabash College was no different. And two or three days after Kent State, they were having a, a rally. It couldn't be a big rally because there's only 850 students in Wabash. And during that rally of students, uh, one young fellow came walking across nonchalantly from the parking lot, uh, sat down on the grass um, in that uh, cross-legged Buddhist fashion, poured gasoline over himself, and set himself on fire. I was in a meeting, happened to look out the window and saw this huge flame coming up from this young man and a lot of students standing back horrified. I, I quickly ran out of the building and went over and together with a couple of students, doused the flames, got some pretty bad burns on my hand. And then I cradled this kid's head in my lap until the ambulance came. He was suffering greatly, and talking about how much he hurt and saying, why in the world did I do this? Why did I do this? He was conscious, but painful. And I said, don't worry, someone's coming, you're all right. And uh, he calmed down some. He was anti-war, he hated the war, he loved Wabash College, even though he was not a student. And so what he was doing was protesting the war. While I held him in my lap, uh, and while he was going through this great pain, he never mentioned the war, he never mentioned anything else except, it hurts so bad, why in the world did I do this? He died two days later. In, in many ways, I think these these protests, these searching for ways to get to Canada or to get conscious objection or even very, very strong protests like the young man who set himself on fire. Some of those were really out of a real conscious or other kind of activity against the war in general. But some of them, very frankly, were kids who didn't want to go to war. It's that simple. And they would not have been protesting the war. If they, if, today, there's very few protests against what's going on in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, etc. And a lot of that is because the draft isn't here anymore. So why fight for something that, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm content, I'm having a good time in college, I'm learning, um, I don't want to mess with the war. But if I know that as soon as I graduate, I'm on my way, that catches my attention pretty well. So I think that's a contrast between that time and this time.